All right, so in today's video, we're checking out the Recon 4. This is another uh, of Dave C. FPV's designs. Uh, very similar to the original 4-inch long range that he worked with Flywoo on the Explorer LR. Uh, however, he has made a few improvements, modifications in this sort of updated design of the 4-inch long range here. Then let's go talk about those. There's a lot of these 4-inch long range on the market already. Uh, the Camaro 4, the Diatone Roma F4, um, the Explorer LR. I'm sure I'm missing a couple of other ones out, out there. Uh, very similar in the same design concept here with the sort of the Dead Cat uh, arm design here. Uh, the carryover from the original Explorer LR, the individual arms and the way the frame is built up. Uh, but this one now um, can uh, hold a 20 by 20 stack. So we have HGLRC parts in here, of course. Uh, it's an F722 flight controller and a 28 amp 401 ESC. Both parts are 6S capable, although I don't recommend doing 6S on this because I think uh, this battery connection here for the camera is connected to the battery lead and that will fry your naked GoPro. So uh, 4S or lower only on this one, just so you don't fry your naked GoPro. Um, he has also modified the frames so that there's a little bit more top plate here. So if you want to carry a bigger like 4S lithium ion pack, there's more room here for that. Plus the naked GoPro that was very cramped on the Explorer LR. And um, I think a little bit more space here for the camera. It's a little bit different here. It's carbon instead of the 3D printed part. So you can see there. Now this uh, I've had for a while. Um, the original, all of the original reviews were on the analog version and uh, I requested the, the DJI version because I mainly fly DJI these days. So I kind of had to wait for this one, but then I, <laughs> I got, I've got, I've got it a while back and I've been flying it around and um, they changed the specs on me. So they sent this out with the, as you can see, the Nebula Pro camera from Cadex. A uh, very nice camera, very similar to the DJI, original DJI camera, but uh, now I believe because of the chip shortage, they changed the spec, and now it's just the, it's the Nebula Nano camera, which is the one that most people don't like, and that's basically because this camera sensor is mm, basically not available anywhere currently because of the chip shortage, and and I don't know when it is, so they, maybe later on um, they'll change that spec back to the Nebula Pro, uh, hopefully, because uh, it is a much better camera. Of course, if you can find a Nebula Pro, you can always swap the camera out yourself if you want the better camera, of course. I don't know if you guys saw my uh, warning about the shortages of these cameras a few months back. I, I heard rumors of that coming and the manufacturers told me that uh, they're having a hard time sourcing these cameras and it's all come to fruition and it's all true. So. <laughs> Hopefully you were able to stock up on a few of those cameras back then. Otherwise, you're kind of everyone's kind of stuck in the same boat right now, waiting around for better DJI cameras or just generally FPV parts. You know, are just you know in short supply everywhere and prices are going up. So if you see something you like and it's at a good price and it's in stock somewhere, I recommend just snatching it up when you can because you, either you, you don't know when it's going to come back in stock, if ever or the price might be double the next time you see it. Just kind of crazy right now what's going on. Anyway, you know, um, other than those few minor changes, uh, well, I don't know if you call them minor, I call them pretty minor. You know, basically a better stack, a 20 by 20 stack is gonna hold off a lot better in the long run, plus uh, more space for a battery. And you know, those are basically the, the big things. Now the motor is, I think, pretty similar. So let me see here. Yeah, it's 1404, so instead of 2750 kV, it's 2800 kV. Slight improvement in the kV. Um, you know, the differences, I know a lot of you are gonna ask, you know, this one or the Camaro 4, or this one or the Room F4, or this one or the Explorer L4. I get that all the time. And um, the differences are pretty minor. Uh, the out of the box PID tune on this one is definitely the best out of, uh, all of the ones I've reviewed, including the Explorer LR out of the box. So, but of course, to be fair, this is the most recent. And as time has gone on, 
um, the pitch tunes on these have kind of been getting more refined and newer versions of Betaflight, better filtering, etc. So that's not surprising and that's kind of expected if you see something newer. It should come with a better pitch tune out of the box. Um, I don't know if any of the pitch tunes have improved on, on the other models because sometimes the manufacturers will update their pitch tunes and I haven't flown them on any updated pitch tunes and they haven't told me about any updated pitch tunes. They just kind of just update them and release new batches with a different pitch tune and they fly different from the ones I reviewed. So I have no control over that and um, that's just part of, uh, I guess, how these companies release products. They release something initially and they'll make tweaks and changes. Sometimes they'll change specs on me and parts will, you know, it, it has a lot to do with what they can get and also what the customers demand and problems they see and then they'll make some changes. So, you know, a lot of times you go back and look at my old reviews and, the, and maybe things have changed and you're wondering why and perhaps, you know, uh, I don't. I've never been told about those changes. And you're probably wondering why. Why? Why isn't any of this stuff being sort of filtered out? And it's because basically no one tells me about these things. It just kind of has happened. So I know that some of you guys have complained about that in the comments. That specs have changed, and 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 no one knows why. And honestly, I couldn't really tell you. I think it just has to do with like what's available in terms of parts that they can build out of these, build these out of. So you got to kind of. Take all these reviews with a grain of salt because after a few months, you know, if it's any, if it's been changed at all, then how it flies might be a little bit different. But in terms of like, you know, this kind of category for what its intended purpose is for long range cruising, getting nice, uh, you know, 4K footage from a naked GoPro, a lot of them aren't going to really, it's not going to matter a whole lot. Because the footage is going to be stabilized, you know, either using real steady go or hyper smooth or something like that. So, in general, you're going to get some pretty decent footage as long as it can fly uh, reasonably well. Because um, a lot of the sort of the shakes and bobbles and little pid tune problems aren't going to show up uh, in the stabilized footage. Uh, in terms of flight time, it's going to depend on the KV, the motor, and the overall weight and the battery you're using. So, if you're trying to maximize your you know, uh, mo you know, get the maximum flight time with it. Like say the, the forest lithium ion packs, you know, some of these people said they can fly 30 minutes on. I'm finding more realistically, it's going to be closer to 20 minutes on pretty much any of these models. And a lot of factors are going to play into how much time you can actually get, uh, how much, how aggressively you fly, the conditions you're flying in, is it windy? What are the ambient temperatures? If it's hot, really hot, is it really cold out? And you know, if the temperatures are really cold, the battery's cold, you know, your flight times are gonna really suffer. You know, on that forest lithium ion pack, you may only get 10 minutes. So, um, yeah, you know, the maximum flight time that's advertised on all of these is up to 30 minutes. It's, it really is a maximum flight time up to a potential 30 minutes, assuming um, ideal conditions, um, you know, favorable flying uh, style, etc. So that, you know, keep all things those things under grant with a grain of salt. Yeah, but what I fly with is generally something like this, like a Force Eight Fifty. Um, sometimes, if I want to go a little lighter, you can go to like a Force Six Fifty to get the weight down. Um, but you know, you're going to get a solid probably like ten minutes on a Force Eight Fifty. Uh, not really kind of worried about how you fly. Now, um, this one is a bit heavier than the original Explorer uh, LR, or the, yeah, the Explorer LR from Flywoo. I think it's uh, about 20 grams, I think, if I remember right. So again, this is a heavier camera than Nebula Nano, so keep that in mind. But this is how much it weighs with the naked GoPro mount, a crossfire receiver antenna. It's 181 grams. I think the Explorer LR was around 165-ish grams. So this is about 15 or so grams heavier. And then here's the flying weight. Here's with the uh, Forest 850. And now we're at two, 275, 276. And then with the Naked GoPro. Now we're well over the 250 mark here. 307.6. So yeah, it's... um well over the 250 market when you fly it like this, you can go with a lighter battery. Now, if you if you really are, you know, uh, can't fly anything other than with, uh, uh, naked, I'm sorry, with uh, uh, 
anything over 200 grams. If it has to be, has to be under that, then you're going to want to go for the lighter uh, frames like the Explorer LR. Um, the Camaro 4 is going to be out, of course. Yeah, it's going to be actually something like the Explorer LR, I think, and a lighter battery, and maybe even, you know, we're not even going with a naked GoPro. Uh, you can reduce the weight by not using a uh, crossfire antenna like this. Um, maybe just fly with a DJI controller. You can strip down the naked GoPro. Um, you can put in an all-in-one flight controller, like like uh, the Zeus, for example, the Zeus 35. There's a lot of things you can do about that. Um, let's see. Oh, one more thing uh, I feel to mention. The GPS here is a little bit different. It's an M80 GPS. It does pick up satellites faster and you get more of them than on the Explorer LR and GPS Rescue uh, does work out of the box. No problem this one, uh, at least the one I've got here. Uh, you probably also notice that these have come with folding propellers. These are the Gemfan 4019 folding props. It does come with a set of the regular two-bladed uh, non-folding props as well. Uh, I just flew it on the folding props because I wanted to see what the pit tune was like with this. And out of the box, this flew really, really nice, um, even with the folding props. I've had flown th these folding props on some of the other four inch ones like the ear blade and that didn't uh, fly so great. I, I couldn't, I could not adjust the pin tunes for uh, that frame. I think there was some sort of resonance issue on the folding prop. And so I kind of gave up, but this one seems to be fine. So um, I, I do like the fact that you get a nice little compact profile like this. So you can stick it into a bag or something without the props sort of sticking out and uh, it makes for a nice little travel package. So I think this is going to be probably my, uh, you know, four inch I'm going to be taking around uh, on trips and stuff and just flying pretty much wherever because, um, you know, it just works, you know. Uh, I get nice footage, I get good flight times, um, and yeah, it just works without having to do a lot of fuss. I, I've been sort of messing around with some other custom builds and stuff and just not getting good, the greatest results. I'll probably talk about that stuff in a different video because it's a really long subject. But yeah, so far this is my favorite. I, I like this one uh, in terms of the uh, four inch class and I'll be flying this one a lot more in the future. So I'll be holding on to this one in case any of you guys are wondering if I'm going to be selling it or not. Yeah, now this one's going to be staying in my fleet for a while because I, I really like the way it flies and I get good um, results in terms of the final output of the Naked GoPro and everything is great on this one. So yeah, uh, kudos to Dave CFPV. He did a good job um, making all the little improvements over the original Explorer LR. And um, yeah, if you want to check it out, there's links down in the description. Here's the flight footage for you. And I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Thank you.